Let's see if there's anything I can do at Winter's Reside. It's been forever since I've been there. Did I officially join the club after I delivered all the letters and stuff? Or have I just not been back to Eletheria since... Oop, since doing that? It's the hour of leaving. What does that do again? Recruiting crew at Pan is temporarily more effective. Oh, okay. I actually could use some more crew. Corn Creek House. Ooh, what is all this? So I guess I have officially joined. Because there's all these fancy things I can do. <clears throat> Exchange an unlicensed chart for cryptic... Oh, wait. You must have done the revolutionaries a service. Oh. Solitary Cobbled Street? You opened this by being initiated into the revolutionaries. So I'm... I am initiated. Five otherworldly artifacts? That's a lot. Some of my whole? Sky Stories? That's fine. Salons do gossip? That's fine. You are in favor with the Calendar Council? Trade all of this for a captivating treasure. I mean, I don't think all of this is at all even worth a captivating treasure. It's worth like, I don't know, 600 sovereigns or something? I don't think that's worth it, but would it make them trust me more? Um, two Aletherian Mysteries for a Vision of the Heavens. I guess I should do that, given that I need moments of inspiration. Yeah, visions of the heavens are kind of hard to come by relative to other things. I think we've already read that before. So I can just keep doing that, okay. Let's do it a couple more times. Mingle with the revolutionaries, what does that do? Gain me one sky story and one tale of terror. Yeah, that I can't just keep doing. That I can only do every once in a while. <clears throat> do I have an active quest with these people? You have seen what the Calendar Council desired you to see. I can lend the Weaver your fortitude. What does that mean? That sounds like one of my stats is going to be reduced. She's standing by the door to Corn Crake House, fiddling with a handkerchief. She smiles with relief when she spots you. They told me you'd not been through it either. She grasps your hand and gives it a squeeze. I can't imagine it's nice having your grievances extracted. My feelings get all tangled in my belly. She pats her stomach. Gives me all manner of indigestion. Do you think they'll go in through my throat? She winces. But it'll be all right, you know. I'm sure of it. You'll be fine. Is it really you she's reassuring? You've learned of the sacrifice, the next stage in drawing closer to the calendar council. So that's how I do it. So I can trade some things because I'm accepted here, but... Mm, offer your grievances, grievances to Winter's Reside. I think this is the thing that will get me closer. <clears throat> A child sits blocking the stairs upward. The other guards avoid her. She smiles at you. Are you ready? If successful, this will allow access to the leader of the Calendar Council. Success at this will cause you damage. Let's do it. She takes your hand and leads you up the stairs. Oh boy, the process of removal, and then a picture of a disturbing implement. Great. Thank you, the girl leads you to a back room. The floor is stained, something storm gray once puddled here. The child squeezes your hand, then returns to her place on the stairs. <coughs> <coughs> In the center of the room is a table not much larger than a desk. Beside it is a gurney with straps. An austere assistant, head to foot in black, stands beside it. She looks up as you enter. 
eat if you're ready to begin. <clears throat> oh boy. I can change my mind. You'll be charged one Eleutherian mystery. It does not do to waste the revolutionary's time. Eat, drink, partake as the assistant bids you. There's a pile of water biscuits on a tin plate. There is a glass of red wine. The austere assistant watches you. This will hurt. Let's do it. Dry as bone dust. The more you chew, the more parched your mouth becomes. The biscuits are arid, brittle, and dry. You cannot eat these wafers of dried plaster, but you must. Your mouth fills, swelling your cheeks. You cannot swallow. Your tongue is stiff as preserved meat. You breathe rapidly through your nose, little huffs of panic. Then there's a hand on your shoulder and a glass at your lips. Your pony is made of fresh baked bread. Sings the assistant? What? You swallow the biscuits like pills, choking them back with swigs of heady red wine. And butter is its saddle, she continues soothingly. <clears throat> Wait, the soothing song they're singing is your pony is made of fresh baked bread and butter is its saddle. Eat your pony, it's delicious? Um, okay, thanks. The austere assistant assists you to the gurney. She fastens the leather straps. Only when you are bound does she cease singing soothing nonsense. She leans over you. Too close, but you can't draw back. The injustice that was done to you. What happened? What did they take from you? The answer rises in your gorge. It pulls pieces of you with it. Okay, so this is what they're extracting. <clears throat> My freedom. You did not give it. It was taken. All right, we spent time in jail. They did take my freedom. My mind. You lost your mind. You were forced to find it. My freedom. You were caged like a beast. Mm. I lost five veils. A pressure builds up in your wrists and ankles. Splinters of bone, biscuit brown, press up through your flesh. Blood oozes from the split skin. The austere assistant uses tongs to pull the shards free. She probes and gouges. Occasionally she reaches for a bone saw, carving off those pieces that your body is unwilling to relinquish. Finally, she pats you as one might a pet. Well done. She doesn't unbuckle you immediately. First, she examines the shards under a dim light, turning them to check the edges. These are excellent. With enough such sacrifices from aggrieved souls, we could strike down a sun. That's an interesting choice of words. We could strike down a sun. Do you have any plans? You planning anything? Yeah, the veils hurt, but I think think I get enough bonuses that I'll still be over 75, which is the most important part. God, this is just nasty. Splinters of bone. Biscuit brown. Brown bone? Not white? What the? Uh, press up through your flesh. That is fucking disgusting. The austere assistant turns back to you, unbuckles your straps, then salves your wounds and binds them. You'll get a proper meal with December. Once you feel up to standing, she gestures towards the black stair. Take your time. You've given a lot. I certainly have. Go to dinner. It's time to meet with the head of the calendar council. When you are ready, the austere assistant supports you to the back stairs. You are almost yourself again. Almost. Your mind probes at the gap like your tongue in a missing tooth. The dining table could seat twelve, but it's set for two. At the head is December. December's not the real name, of course, but that name was not made to be spoken with tongue and lips and a throat. Their face is long and serene, like a borzoi hound, with the same soft nose, the anxious grin. 
Is that their mask or their face? You do not recall them removing it to eat. Dine with December. This will unlock a new facet you can choose when leveling up. Well, it's a little bit late for that. <laughs> There's a basket of fresh bread on the table. There is oil and honey and sweet vinegar. The scent of a roast wafts into the room. December spoke to you like a comrade, like a friend. They shared a doubt that preyed upon them, and you dissected it like doctors. It's difficult to recall more details of your conversation. December spoke about the edifice of the universe and the parts in its machine, of a great chain that binds us all in our place. It all made sense at the time, fitting together like the cogs on a clock. Now you'd struggle to tell it to others. It's as if you were both speaking in another language which has now fallen from your mind. You are closely entwined with the liberation of night. That's a pretty huge thing that I just did. <clears throat> I haven't been talking about the like implications for Elizabeth during all of this, but I mean, we we just joined. We, we just like really, really joined for real. The liberation of night. We are now their people. We now want to. We want to do away with suns. I think. We want to be liberated. Well, I mean, I don't know about do away with or kill necessarily, but probably that. But regardless, we just want liberation from their harmful, controlling light. So what can I do now? I wonder what that level up would have been. I have no way of seeing what it is, but I bet it'd be real interesting. I'm sure I could look it up on the wiki or something like that. Step into the conservatory. The door is guarded by well-armed revolutionaries in a scarlet uniform. They will only stand aside for those who are known to December. Only a few revolutionaries dare commit themselves entirely to the liberation. You were made less, and yet are greater for it. The guards stand aside to let you pass. One shakes your hand. None address you, but they look at you with admiration and respect. The table has been cleared of settings. December has propped a vast canvas against it and is working. They're too busy to converse, but you are welcome here. Look at December's work. This will grant you a moment of inspiration. That would be amazing. Eight Eleutherian Mysteries for a moment of inspiration. Okay, I need to spend some serious time in Eleutheria. Get a lot of moments of inspiration. Return to the Corn Grake House. Spending too long in December's company is taxing. The mind tries to hold more than it was made to. It begins to crack. So, I can exchange an unlicensed chart for a cryptic benefactor. Just one unlicensed chart for a cryptic benefactor? That's an amazing trait, because I have so many unlicensed charts, and I rarely use them. And I have no cryptic benefactors. Hell yeah. Mmm. Mmm. The Liberation despises the Empyrean. It sullies Eleutheria with its laws and its light. This will exchange a charred Empyrean nameplate for an Eleutherian mystery. Ooh. Now that I'm really into the liberation of night, is the Empyrean my enemy? Like, are they going to shoot me on sight or what? Because I still have stuff I want to do with the Empyrean. In fact, I, w I wanted to support them because it was either um, at the Eagle. Wasn't it called the Eagle's Empyrean? Doesn't say it on the map, though, but yeah, the Eagle's Empyrean. <clears throat> it was either support the Empyreans or support London and fuck London. So I hope they don't shoot me on sight. Anyway, unlicensed charts for cryptic benefactor. She sits at the less flowery end of a vast table, writing numbers in an accounting ledger, occasionally moving to taste the stew bubbling on the stove. One moment, please. The broker smiles as she goes to clean her hands. Can't risk a stain. 
she unfurls the chart and holds it under a lamp. Satisfied, she rolls it and tucks it into her sleeve. Then she marks one column of a neat ledger, writes your name in another, then strikes through the entire row using a ruler. I'll send word. You'll have the help when you need it. She returns to her cooking of bread, stew, and books. I think I want like 10 cryptic benefactors. Maybe I'll settle for nine. Nine cryptic benefactors, six unlicensed charts. Actually, no. I rarely use unlicensed charts. Let's go for ten. Ten to five. And now it's laggy as hell. There we go. Anything else to do here? Conservatory? No. Just did that. No nameplates. Mm, what about the street? Exchange Eletherian Mysteries for a Vision of the Heavens. I'm just doing the math. For the Grievers, it took five Vision of the Heavens to give me one moment of inspiration. So it would take ten Eletherian Mysteries to give me five Visions of the Heavens to give me one moment of inspiration. So this is more expensive than spending eight Eletherian Mysteries to directly get a moment of inspiration. Yeah, okay. We're in the liberation of night. It kind of didn't dawn on me that that's what they were. Like, I'm sure I knew that in the past, but it's been so long since I've interacted with them at all. I knew that they were revolutionaries, but I didn't quite remember that they were the liberation of night. Not that I regret doing it. No, I think it makes sense. Everything we've seen more and more has made Elizabeth hate sons and scared of sons more and more. Inventory management. What kind of prospects do they have? Caged catches for Carillon. I'm not going back there. T for Ackles. Okay, yeah. The Murgatroyd Run is what it's called. <clears throat> Alright, I think we have a lot to do here. I think. Let's recruit some crew. It's more effective right now because of the hour that it is. The hour of leaving. Oh, damn. That was super effective. That maxed me out. Wasn't I at 16? So that just gave me 8 I actually didn't want that many people, because the more people you have, the more food they eat. The faster they eat it. Oh well. Rubbery Enclave. We've been there, right? Yeah, the Rubbery Suffragist. Yeah, this is where we deliver the Rubbery Man, so we can come back here even though we don't have another Rubbery Man. But I don't think there's any point. Visit a theater in a secluded grove. What did this do again? Oh, nothing much. Cypress King. Mmm, right. We need to talk to them about the courtesy for the ambition. Also, trade and port reports. I have two of them. That will give me two Eleutherian mysteries, I think. Alright, consult the king about the courtesy. The masked citizen has accompanied you. You hope the king can tell you something about the phrase that recurred in your friend's singed notes. I pressed the wrong button. <laughs> there we go. <clears throat> the king expects tribute first. Something appropriate. Seven savage secrets. A crimson promise steeped in old starlight. A moment of inspiration pried from the skull of a... The mass citizen interrupts. That sounds like a lot of work, and we're already here. Will one of these do instead? They draw a luminous bottle from their bag. Inside, a knotted soul stirs the inconstant color of a blue bottle's back. It opens seven slitted eyes lazily. Goodness, the king says. Yes, please. The eerie soul changes hands. The king will speak, but in accordance with Pan's restrictions on storytelling, only to one of you. Huh. 
Huh. I will hear it or the masked citizen will hear it. God, I want to hear it. I'm sorry, masked citizen, I'll pay you back later, but I want to freaking hear it. <clears throat> After all, she was your friend first. The citizen reluctantly demurs. Sorry, buddy. There is a chain of being, the king whispers. At the top, the suns. At, or near the bottom, humanity. Between those two links are countless others. Curators, devils, heart catchers, flukes, messengers. Some secrets, like the courtesy, are dangerous for th those of us lower on the chain even to speak of. You must learn them from something higher. Three such beings reside in Pan. The second storyteller, the piper, and December. Put your question to one of them. When you pass the information to the masked citizen, they grimace. Then I have a plan. Well, my plan would be to go to December, because we just joined them and just dined with them. I just put that description in my notes, because it seemed important. The chain of being. The masked citizen leads you away from the populated parts of Pan's ruins and into a statute grove. We can speak here, they say. Discuss your next steps. The trees are secluded. The air is dark and warm. From a nearby grove comes an eddy of flutes and drums. The masked citizen sits on a tumbled column. Pan is home to many sects and factions. Three are preeminent. The Brazen Brigade, the Heart Catchers, and Winters Reside. Join one, win their trust, advance in their ranks, and then coax an answer about the courtesy from their patron. I'm going to look into something else. The king has given me an idea. If you want to speak to me, leave a message in this grove. I'll check it regularly. Okay, well, I think we're set. The masked citizen departs. Good luck. Please don't end up dead. You arrange to meet the citizen in the statued grove. Somewhere nearby, a revel of Pan's citizens processes through the trees. You see bobbing amber lamps and hear voices raised in laughter and anguish. Ask why they can't join one of the factions. They seem to know their way around Pan. Because I already have. The Neo-Nocturnals who rule the Forum here. A less important sect, and of no help in our current situation, but one apt to my proclivities. My loyalties are already declared, in other words. Yours are up for negotiation. Pick a faction that suits your temperament. Don't worry, I'll find a way to make myself useful. The Neo-Nocturnals. That's a very interesting name. I wonder what they're all about. Yes, here we go. Ask what is the courtesy? December is... Well, you don't know what December is, but they're older and vaster than you, and they hate the stars. Half the truth. December steeples an unlikely number of elegant fingers and speaks of a time when cordiality between the stars failed, when constellations and conjunctions went to war. The courtesy was the agreement that ended it. The stars agreed a set of permissions and ceremonies that must precede any murder of a star. Now the sky is littered with dead suns, but all agree that the murders were committed with a due sense of decorum. There December stops. There is more, they say, but to speak it would hasten a battle December is not yet willing to fight. You stumble from Corncrake House, your memory of the conversation already beginning to flake. You had better talk to the masked citizen before it collapses entirely. So, just to go over it again. Uh, they spoke of a time when cordiality between the stars failed, when constellations and conjunctions went to war. The courtesy was the agreement that ended it. The stars agreed a set of permissions and ceremonies that must precede any murder of a star. Now the sky's littered with dead suns, but all agree that the murders were committed with a due sense of decorum. 
So it sounds like there was all out war and it was chaos. And the courtesy was basically a way to make murdering less chaotic. I don't know. It's weird though. Permissions and ceremonies tell you that you have to perform before you can murder a star. What? It still just seems like a weird euphemism. The courtesy. How weird. So they're still warring, but just with a proper sense of decorum now. Like, what? Inform the citizen about what you've learned. The courtesy is a pact between stars which delineates the rules by which sons may murder one another. <clears throat> they give a hollow laugh and run a shaking hand over their eyes. As below, so above. And now, I hesitate to mention my idea. I would rather know no more. I would rather forget what I've already learned. But it occurred to me that if we want to know the son's dirty secrets, we should ask a son who has turned his coat. They point you to the sable quarter of the sky where Eletheria's midnight sun seethes. We can seek an audience with the halved at the house of rods and chains. And thanks to you, now we have a better idea what to ask. Oh boy. Is this going to be the first time we actually get to speak with a son? Well, I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode. So I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, we're going up to the House of Rods and Chains to see if we can get audience with a son.